Today we're going to do something a little bit more chill than normal and we're going to continue off from the video I did a few weeks ago about the reed diffusers. So in that video I was saying how I wanted to make some reed diffusers for Christmas to sell at my market stall and essentially that is what I've gone and done. So in that video we were talking about how to actually go and develop and create this scent. I went and did that and so essentially what I came up with in the end was quite a few different concepts but after testing them all out fully I essentially found only one that I was happy enough with to actually go ahead and kind of sell for now and I thought you know we can do some more another time. But for now we'll just sell this one because I think it's the best and that was a spiced pear. So essentially the smell is meant to be a bit like when you're kind of, say you're making applesauce, pear sauce, that kind of thing. It's kind of like an apple and pear smell. And it's kind of got cinnamon and just a little bit of vanilla, that kind of thing as well. So it's that kind of thing. So what I did was I made the formula for that and finished it off. Then I went and got an SDS done. And that's because in order to uh, sell these reed diffusers, you need something called a CLP label which is a special kind of legal label which has to go on your product um, for it to be legal. Um, and for that you need the SDS. And then I went and made a production batch, which is now in this five litre bottle. So in this video, what I'm simply gonna be doing is just filming me making all of these things. So I've got some boxes, some bottles, and some reeds. We're gonna fill up the bottles, put on all the labels, package them all up, and you're just gonna see that process and hopefully you enjoy it. So the first step was to do the boxes. So the boxes all came pre-folded, flat packed. And what I had to do was to stick the labels on. So I had two different labels. There were the legal labels, uh, which I essentially have to have. They, I don't get a choice about what goes on them. Um, but I can design them in the way I want. So I got those and I put them on the bottom of the box out of sight. And then I had my main label, which I designed in quite a certain way. Now, when doing these diffusers, I ended up doing two different sizes, both 50 milliliters and 100 milliliters. But when doing the labels, I didn't want to buy too many different types of labels because if I'd have bought different designs of labels, it would have cost me more because each time I got a set of labels, it essentially cost me a, a minimum amount per design. So I wanted to save a bit and only get one type of label. So I tried to design a label that could both go on the 50 mil and 100 mil boxes. And I also got a label that could go on both the boxes and the bottles. So the way I designed this was I took the label and essentially put a line down the middle and I put the kind of title and name of the product on one side, which was a uh, reed diffuser spiced pear and the brand name. And then on the other side, I just put an image of a pear, which I thought looked pretty decent. So in this step, I am taking all of the flat pack boxes, putting the labels on a certain position, which I know will look right when they are uh, folded up. And then I'm just kind of opening them up ready for the next step which is to actually fold the bottom of the boxes. So I'm folding the bottom of the boxes ready for the things to go in, but I'm not actually putting the stuff inside yet. I'm not actually closing the lid. So then the next step was to actually go and fill up the bottles themselves. So the bottles that I chose for the reed diffusers are actually just large essential oil bottles. And I did think about a lot of different options for bottles. I almost picked uh, regular kind of reed diffuser bottles, but in the end, I actually just felt that these would work quite well uh, for the product. I thought they looked quite good and I felt they fitted with the kind of perfumery theme of the brand quite well. And they were also a little bit cheaper than the usual reed diffuser bottles. So I have my big batch of the reed diffuser liquid and I'm not showing me making that up because obviously I want to keep the final formula that I chose secret because, well, I'm actually selling it for my brand. But I went and made up that big batch of reed diffuser liquid. It's stored in this kind of uh, plastic jerry can and this plastic is quite inert so it won't actually react with the reed diffuser liquid. And then I'm simply filling it up. Now to begin with, this was a bit of a problem because if I try to pour straight from that big uh, kind of canister thing, then it would actually dribble all down the side. So what I did to begin with was take one of those squeezy perfumes alcohol bottles that I have 
and actually fill it up by sucking it into one of those bottles and then using that squeezy bottle to measure out the either 50 or 100 milliliters for the reed diffuser liquid. Then I filled it up into the bottles with a funnel and I found that the funnel was quite helpful because it really stopped the uh, liquid accidentally spilling down the side and if it accidentally spilled down the side then it was really awkward or it took quite a while to clean off with some paper tissue. Also I use gloves and that's again because I didn't want to get this liquid on my hands. So this process was a little bit slow because every time I had to visually check that the 50 milliliters was correct and keep kind of filling up this squeezy bottle but in the end it did get the job done. So next was putting on all the caps and this was pretty simple. I just used basic aluminium caps which was nice because I already had them in stock and it saved me from if I'd have used rediffuser bottles going to buy firstly caps for those but also plugs, uh, plugs which you need to essentially seal the liquid. So putting on these is pretty simple, just making sure that they're done up quite nice and tightly in order to make sure that they don't leak in transport or anything like that. Then next, after the caps, I also put the labels on the bottles. So in order to put the labels on the bottles, the most difficult thing was actually getting them in a consistent position and making sure that they were pretty straight because if a bottle label is not straight, then you really can notice it. So I used some lines which were actually naturally on the glass on the bottle and I used those to help line up the center of my label line and that meant that the labels were straight pretty much every time. If it wasn't straight then I took it off and if I couldn't reuse that label say because it had um, kind of ripped a little bit then I would just get a nice new fresh one. Then also you needed the labels for the bottom and again that's those legal CLP labels so I got some the same labels actually as for the boxes and I put those on the bottom again just to make them a little bit more out of sight. So finally then we have finishing them off and that is applying this shrink wrap to the caps. So I've got these little plastic uh, kind of shrink sheets and the first step was to actually cut those down to the right size for my caps and then you can see I'm placing them over the bottles. And what you do is you get a heat gun and you just blow it around this little plastic shrink wrap and it causes the whole thing to shrink onto the cap. So once you've done this, that's pretty much it. The product's done, you put it in the box and you're finished. So the reason that I used these little shrink wraps was, well, really for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it actually just looks quite nice and professional. And secondly, it actually keeps the cap on. It's just another layer of protection. And thirdly, it actually is a kind of tamper evident thing. So it shows if the customer has opened the product. So say they wanted to make a return or something like that, then as long as it's still got this cap on, you can tell that they haven't gone and taken some unknown amount of the diffuser liquid out of the bottle, or they haven't say gone and added something to it that shouldn't be there. Not that there's any real reason that they should have done this, but it does save you a lot of problems because you know that you've got a brand new unopened product. Anyway, that is pretty much all there is to it. So making all of these did take me quite a while in the end. Obviously this video has been sped up quite a lot and then that doesn't take into account all of the time designing the formula and making the batch in the first place. But as you can see, it wasn't too complicated either. In the end, I made 50 of the smaller 50 mil reed diffusers and 25 of the larger 100 mil ones. I also bought a massive box of reeds. I think I bought one kilogram of reeds and then I packaged those up into individual little bags. So after making all of these, my plan was to go to some local markets and sell them. And unfortunately, due to a various number of factors, it didn't really happen before Christmas when these really were meant to be products before Christmas. The reed diffusers being spiced pear is quite a wintry theme. And then people are looking for things like diffusers as little gifts. So I don't really expect to sell too many of them now. I did sell some of them. Um, it's just a shame that various factors, which were kind of beyond my control, mostly stopped things. For example, a lot of the stuff came late because of a lot of postage strikes. So they were made later than I wanted to. And then out of the markets, one of them was rained. One of them, they didn't want me to sell diffusers because they had someone else selling them. And then another one was actually on Christmas Eve and that was so quiet that I just left after a while because it was so completely empty. I think everyone had already got their presents at that point. 
So I, I still have some left. I did sell a few. The ones that I did sell, um, I did have really positive feedback for, which is great. Um, but apart from that, I'll have to find something else to do with the rest of them. Or maybe I'll just keep them for next year as I'm pretty sure that they should last just fine. And again, as I said, uh, the feedback from the people who had them was actually really, really good. I think they last a long time and they also diffuse quite a strong smell, which is pretty good because, you know, some re-diffusers you buy, you buy them and you can smell them for a few days and then that's about it. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's given you maybe a little bit of inspiration if you're thinking of doing something similar for yourself, whether it be to do with re-diffusers or even just perfumes, the idea of going and manufacturing your own products. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And do remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description.